Hey, this is Steven from The Green Engineers, and welcome to my 11 and a quarter minute um, update video. So this guy just came in. Uh, this is for all you guys that are really excited about the shredder and uh, waiting for me to begin production on the Reclaimer, which is a plastic shredder machine. So uh, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, the shop dot build just opened up this last weekend. You would see that on my last update if you guys have watched that. So now I'm getting ready to build a machine there because they do, they're do they not going to have a machine for a while to do the shredder. So I decided to begin production on my own machine to build the shredder. So the best machine to build that shredder is a water jet, um, which is a personal water jet. So I don't know if you guys have seen the project called Wazer, which is basically short for water laser. Um, it was a Kickstarter for like one and a quarter, one and a half million dollars, or one and a quarter million dollars. I can't remember, but uh, that one was uh, the first personal desktop water jet. Um, it had for my project. It had. It was. It's now selling for about four to five thousand um, dollars. It was uh, a little bit low spec for what I needed to do. So, uh, for example, it wouldn't be able to cut quarter-inch steel, and even uh, th it would be able to cut three sixteenths. But three sixteenths, it would be able to travel at 0.7 inches per minute, which would take about 21 hours to cut a shredder. So, uh, I decided to set off on building my own. Um, also, after the Wazer, there's another big company that got into the game of desktop water jet called. Uh, Omax and they make a machine called the Protomax which has a one foot by one foot bed and it runs at 30,000 p 30, PSI and it's able to cut up to an inch of steel or, or an inch of different materials, uh, hard materials like uh, steel, probably aluminum, an inch of aluminum and probably do three quarters of steel. And uh, the cool thing about Omax is that they put the specs of that pump online so you could look at it. So that's pretty cool, and uh, I could get an idea of how uh, to better build my own um, water jet in order to compete with uh, cutting uh, cutting quality like that. So this is the pump that I decided on for my own um, my own design. So this guy is uh, from a company called uh, Ju. So it's basically July with an R. So I call it. Um, Jelier, Jelier, I'm going to call them Jelier Industrial. So uh, these guys made this custom pump for me. So this is, uh, it says here on production date, it says 2018 820. So that was uh, basically at this point three days ago. Yeah, it's basically three days ago. So it took them about two weeks to put this guy together to do all the machining and stuff to put this guy together. And then so they just put the stamp on about three days ago, right before they shipped it. And now I have it here at the house um, three days later. So uh, this guy is uh, has a working pressure up to 30,000 PSI. And um, it just has enough flow rate to uh, do what I need it to do with a water jet. So uh, this particular guy is called a air-driven. So here's the manual for it. It says uh, JLGD, and this is a JLGD 400. Uh, 400 is a uh, pressure ratio, and I'll go over that in a second. But this is the air-driven liquid booster. So basically what that means is that you provide uh, pneumatic air, uh, 80 PSI from a compressor, and uh, you provide it here, and it will move a piston to... Um, uh, basically you use advantage so one side has a bigger area piston and one side has a smaller area piston so if you move a bigger area piston a uh, certain distance on the other side you're going to amplify that uh, that pressure depending on the difference in area so basically that 400 means that one size of the piston is 400 times the other size so that's what the 400 to 1 means so if I provide it 80 PSI of air pressure, it will multiply the 80 PSI of air pressure 400 times, which is about 32,000 PSI. So you could use that idea to come up with what pressure you'll be at. So uh, you take whatever pressure you're putting in, you multiply it by 400, that is your ideal output pressure. 
So this guy is a special pump to um, increase flow rate. So normally what you have on a piston is, um, on this kind of machine, is you have a single action and single stage. So what happens is I provide air here and it will push and it will push the piston down and compress the water that's in here and then the water will come out and then as it goes back it will suck water in so here well here's the inlet here's the outlet it says in here out here so water comes in here piston compresses and then the valve opens and the water leaves but in this case um, on the back stroke it will suck water in and then it will compress it but uh, that is too slow for me because of the back it's not compressing liquid right so I have one half of that cycle where it's not uh, spitting out uh, high pressure liquid so what this one has is it actually has two sides and so what happens is when the when this piston is compressing this liquid it actually is connected to this side so as it compresses here it's sucking in liquid here and then as it comes back it's compressing this liquid to leave so every single section of the stage it's always pushing out liquid out of either side so here it's going to squirt you know it's going to shoot out here 30,000 and then here 30,000 and here 30,000 each part of the cycle so that's called a dual action so this is a dual action single stage and what that does compared to a single action single stage is it doubles the flow rate that is needed for water jet for the water jet flow rates that are required there's another option which I'm going to talk about for a second is a double action double stage and what happens is again it has two heads but instead you have water go in through the in here and then it comes out high pressure and then it goes back through the in on it actually goes back into the pump on the end on the end over here and then it comes out so basically it compresses it twice but what happens in that case you're gonna double your pressure but you're gonna um, you're gonna decrease your uh, flow rate by over half so um, that is not the case that I wanted to do I wanted to have high flow rate so what I'm gonna build for this guy is I have to have a manifold of two p uh, two tubes of water that are gonna come out and combine and go into these two inlets and then a stainless steel tube that leaves here in the outlet and here in the outlet and combines to have one continuous flow of water. Now that should provide plenty of um, water to run the water jet. So uh, basically this guy is uh, was a pretty good deal and so we'll see if this will work with uh, the other hardware um, configurations that I'm thinking of. So the parts that I have left on this guy, I have to order the uh, cutting head, which I'm going to try to do tonight. If not, I'm going to do it tomorrow um, during school. So I'm going to order the cutting head, and then I have to uh, source a um, gantry, an XY gantry, and I'm going to try to do a two foot by two foot gantry. And so I need a gerbil controller, Arduino for that guy, and then steppers and stuff for that guy. I'm probably just going to buy it because it's quicker than building it. And I want this guy to be built as quickly as possible. So I'm going to buy that, the cutting head, and then I need to buy a hosing that connects this. So I would like to use flexible hosing for a small portion. But it's very difficult to source those. The uh, only places you could really get those is uh, China and... Um, I haven't really even found a manufacturer in China. The only manufacturer I've found is in Germany for that type of uh, flexible hosing that could withstand 30,000 PSI working pressure, otherwise known as WP. So uh, that's basically it for this guy. I hope to have this guy in action here pretty soon. Uh, it weighs almost 30 pounds, so I'm definitely going to have to have a pretty heavy-duty aluminum extrusion chassis to hold this guy. So after I have those parts, I'll be able to build a makeshift um, thing for it, put a bucket down, and be able to put a piece of plastic down and cut through something. Um, after I get all the gantry, well, even without the gantry, I could just open up a valve to open up the airline and then uh, like cut through, feed a piece of steel through like a bandsaw and see it cut the steel. 
and then from there I'll be able to tell how fast and how slow I'm able to go. Then I have to set up the gantry and the software to uh, turn on and turn off this guy, uh, the high pressure water. And then I will look into um, uh, doing a vacuum formed bubble to encase this whole thing in um, a nice little housing so that uh, uh, we could keep water from spraying everywhere. And then hopefully I'll be able to make at least a shredder a day and uh, or uh, some other projects from companies like Precious Plastics, etc. Alright, so that's pretty much it on this guy. Uh, I hope that you guys see quite a bit of this, uh, this July air pump uh, in the future here. And um, I'm going to get started on getting the rest of the parts of, of this guy in. And I will see you guys in the next update. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to catch me on the next update video. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.